Hey folks, and welcome to another tier list here at West Yorkshire Retro Gamer. And my first tier list kind of covered um, an early prediction as to where my favourite football team and all the other teams in the same division would finish uh, for this up and coming season. Um, so for my second list, I thought I'd go for something. A on a totally different, um, totally different subject, um, and that is, I've decided to rank all of Nintendo's uh, home consoles from best to okay, um, and the reason that I put best to okay is that they're all they're all good. You know, there is no bad console, um, but there's some that are better than others, and so I'll explain my reasons for the positions um, you all may have different op opinions on all of this um, but uh, ultimately um, this is just my opinion um, so for any f fans of certain consoles who believe that their console has been put too low or too high don't be offended by it just a bit of fun and as I say just my opinion um, do feel free to put your own opinions in your own orders um, in the comments below. Uh, without further ado, um, let's get into it. I will go from the oldest console to the most up-to-date one. Um, and so that starts off with the original Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, this might come as a bit of a surprise to you all, but the NES is coming in in 7th. So I have to apologise, the the pictures of everything does look a bit stretched and a bit pixelated so I do apologise on that one. Um, editing videos and getting the best quality pictures is not my necessarily my strong point. So I'll, I'll just explain why. So the original Nintendo, without this there wouldn't be all the other Nintendo consoles that you see today. It has my respect and again this is kind of a reason why I'm not putting from best to worst there's no such thing as worst when it comes to Nintendo consoles I love Nintendo consoles and Nintendo games um, you know some of my most favorite of all time so um, the reason for it being put in seventh it hasn't aged well if I'm gonna be ever so slightly critical um, if you play the games that are on the Super Nintendo, on the original Nintendo, I should say. Um, there's not many that are really playable today. Um, the exceptions to those rules would be I really like Cubs Adventure. I think that still plays really well. Um, you could argue that. Mario 1 and Mario 3 again and probably more so 3 than 1 um, due to the mechanics you know Super, Super Mario Bros 3 still still plays pretty well um, Punch Out still quite a fun game you know so it, it's got it's good games but it's, it's in 7th purely because overall a lot of the games haven't aged well but it's still a fantastic console it you know without the original Nintendo Entertainment System the original NES there wouldn't be all of the others out there after so this is not me putting the NES down I just feel it overall it hasn't aged well in the sense that when you play let's say around maybe 80 to 90 percent of the games you know the, the, they're not they're not of the level of some of the more recent ones um but more to the point you know some of them are the mechanics are a little bit clunky the graphics are quite quite aged in comparison to others um but as i say you know still massive respect for what came out in the late 80s there with the original nintendo entertainment system the console that followed that was the super nintendo now the picture I've got here um, 
was one that was defaulted on TMAK. It's the American version. It's the I think it was the Famicom, but it, for all intents and purposes, with me being here in England, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System first. Now, this came the the ones for first and second came very close, and I had a little bit of trouble separating them. Now, you you could argue that again some of the games on the Super Nintendo haven't aged well, and some of them haven't. But um, when you take the very best games out of the Super Nintendo, even today, a lot of the games have aged quite well, and there's still a lot of fun to play. And I spent so many of my younger years playing the Super Nintendo um, fantastic console um, and as I say probably my favourite of all time um, Street Fighter 2 Turbo came with the console it's one of my favourite games of all time absolutely love it um, you've got other good franchises as well like Mortal Kombat Killer Instinct was a fantastic fighting game on there as well and I mean, I am a bit biased because I am a fighting game guy and a beat em up game guy. Um, again, Final Fight 3, another superb game, really. Um, and a lot of other really good ones. Now, as I say, the, the console that's going to come in in second um, is very, very close uh, to first. I found it very difficult to separate the two. Um, and I'll explain a little bit, uh, you know, as, as we go along. Um, but yeah, for me, SNES, best of the bunch. Um, it's it's lasted the test of time, and, and you know, some of some of the music as well. I mean, you know, aside from the beat, aside from the beat up and fighting games, I mentioned the Donkey Kong Country series, Donkey Kong Country one, two, and three. You know, DKC2, arguably one of the best games ever made. Um, you know, with DKC2, you can't fault any of it. The graphics, the gameplay, the music. Um, just a, you know, a phenomenal game. And as I say, the franchise of Donkey Kong Country, um, you know, the, the, the trilogy that came out on the SNES, just absolutely superb. So yeah, for me, SNES number one. The console that followed, the Nintendo 64. Second. Yep, this is the one that has pushed the SNES all the way here. Um, and I was very, 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 very close to, um, to swapping the SNES and the N64 around very close. Uh, the Nintendo 64, I mean it, it was a breakthrough wasn't it, you know, for the first time you had proper 3D games, um, you know, from Nintendo. Um, I mean I could reel off so many good ones, Banjo-Kazooie, um, even the original Mario 64, you know, the very first Mario for the, 60, you know, for the Nintendo 64. Um, Conquest by Ferdy broke all kind of um, tradition and really went out there as, as a you know what could be classed as a bit of an x rated game um, you know it broke boundaries with that you know and again the gameplay the graphics the music I mean the humour in that game is hilarious it's brilliant um, uh, even Donkey Kong 64 was pretty good out of that bunch as well. Like the, this, and, and including Banjo Tooie as well, which came out towards the end of, of the 64 time as well. Um, you know, all of those platformers, you know, just on their own were so good. So, so good. Um, and then there's, you know, lots of other good games as well. I mean, I, as you know, I like my football, you know. International Superstar Soccer 64 was fantastic for me. I really enjoyed that game. Um, some of the commentary on that game was hilarious. Um, just, just really, really good games.
games and as I say the breakthrough of 3D gaming really started on the N64 um, they had little snippets you know with the other two but that was the first one to really break the mould uh, moving on to the next console uh, the one that followed was the GameCube um, right where am I putting the GameCube Type one this, these middle ones are all very, very close really. I'm gonna put the GameCube for the minute in fifth. So, the GameCube. The first console of Nintendo to not use the traditional cartridge. Um, the GameCube used a mini disc. Um, and some fantastic games. I think I think the GameCube is a very underrated console. Um, you know, compared to others that maybe came out at the time. Um, early two thousands. Um, and again, just just a little bit of a breakthrough with it all in the sense that you know you you were looking at games now where it was really starting to to, to advance at this point. So you. You know, you had very sharp graphics, music sounded crisper. Um, you had a lot more, um, you know, vocal speech in games. Um, so you'd have characters talking to each other properly and things like that. And it, it just all, it all started really to come together um, in terms of what might be classed as a little bit more modern gaming. And bearing in mind, we're still talking around 20 years ago. Um, you know, so it's still a long time ago with the GameCube. But again, if you if you try playing some of the games uh, on the GameCube now, you'll have a lot of fun with them. Um, I would just say that maybe it just lacked one or two games that could have potentially been really good. It didn't have a lot of, um, you know, the, some of these later uh, consoles didn't really have a lot of you know beat 'em up and fighting games, and some of them are so good that they really should have um, you know more modern entries. Um, you know, if you look at the Sega franchise, look at Streets of Rage. You know where you had one, two, and three, and then four comes out. You know relatively recently, and, and you know it's a fantastic, fantastic little game. Really, it just kind of brings back you know really happy memories of you know beat 'em up and fighting games. But yeah, the GameCube goes in fifth uh, the next one is the Nintendo Wii I'm gonna put the Wii in fourth so the Wii had um, again another bit of a breakthrough really different style controller um, there was the option to get um, the, you know, what they called the classic controller, which plugged into the bottom of that remote that you can see on the picture there. Um, but ultimately, um, the Wii ended up having larger discs than what the GameCube had, um, and ultimately, really started bringing out um, a whole different level of graphics um, and, and sound quality and things like that uh, a lot more interaction as well in terms of the unlike traditional consoles where you sat on your chair and, and you you know you played there with your controller in hand um, the Wii set that the Wii kind of got people to be a little bit more active with gameplay um, so Wii Sports which was the game that traditionally came with the console um, you know you'd use the remote and you'd be you know, swinging it for a racket uh, with tennis, or you'd kind of, you know, sweep it up like that for for the tempting bowling. Um, you know, so there was a lot more. You know, you you'd kind of, you know, do that with with the remote in one hand and the nunchuck in the other, and do the boxing. Um, you know, so it, it really got people more active. Um, and originally, as far as I'm aware, it was going to be called the Nintendo Revolution. But in the end, they, they decided to to call it the Wii, um, because I think roughly translated, it meant that we play together or something like that. 
I could be wrong and correct me in the comments if I am wrong and I do apologize um, just going off the top of my head there um, but yeah so again it broke boundaries it, it you know it, it came up with something new something that was going to differentiate itself from other consoles um, one of my all-time favorite games is on uh, the Wii and actually originally was on um, the GameCube um, but just feels so much better playing it on uh, the Wii and that is Resident Evil 4 the Wii edition uh, I, I just love that game um, still play it at my mum's today and she still really enjoys watching me play it as well um, yeah uh, you know that, that for me is the standout game for the Wii it's just it's a phenomenal game and obviously, as many of you may know, there's been a remastered version of Resident Evil 4 that's come out for PC. That is hard. I'm still streaming that today on, on, on my channels. And, uh, oh boy. Yeah, that is a tough one. But again, a fantastic, fantastic remastering of Resident Evil 4. Um, so, coming up towards the end now, you can obviously see where the last two consoles are going to fit. One of them is going to be in third and the other one's going to be in sixth. Um, so, and you, you, you may have already be able to guess which is going where. So, the Wii U, that's going to go sixth. Um, so, the Wii U, by no means a bad console whatsoever, same with the, the original Nintendo, nothing negative you know to say about uh, any of these consoles I've had a lot of fun on every single one of them um, the Wii U um, again tried to break boundaries and tried to come up with something in, you know innovative and, and, and different um, so with the Wii U um, you could play it either on um, the TV or you had the you know the large handheld console um, which was you know kind of like playing a big Game Boy for example um, just with a lot better graphics um, but it was uh, yeah the, the, the Wii U um, the only reason it's kind of in the lower part of this table is that um, aside from that it didn't really advance all that much after the Wii in my own opinion um, as I say, the, the innovation of the Wii U was the ability to be able to play it, um, you know, on the uh, the large handheld uh, device, um, you know, which obviously then freed up the TV for you know if the rest of the family wanted to, you know, watch something on TV, you could still play the Wii U. So in in that regard, it was a fun, you know, it really is a fantastic invention. Um, in just in terms of the games they didn't really kind of advance that much in my in my opinion and maybe you know maybe I'm missing something here um, you know maybe some of you that's played the Wii U a little bit more than I have um, might have a different opinion on it um, but uh, yeah that's where it's going so you can guess where the very final console is going and that is the Nintendo Switch the most recent console for Nintendo is going in third um, again a little bit of innovation here um, with what they did with the the controls um, again you can create something which is a little bit like the Wii U in the, in the in terms of the handheld so the little the little monitor that came with the, the with the switch you can obviously attach the um, the joy cons uh, to either side of it and, and just Play it, play it like that, or um, you've got the option of, you know, obviously playing on the TV. Now, the good thing with the Joy Cons is that you can either put them together, like in that picture, onto the controller bracket and have it as one controller, or if you wanted to do a two player, you can give one of the Joy Cons to whoever you're playing with, and you would literally just play with a little Joy Con in your hand. Um, the reason it's as high up as it is is partly because of the innovation of it all um, but I mean some of the games graphically are, are just lush they, you know it's really so, some of them look absolutely fantastic 
Um, now that it's been out a, a little while, it, it does now have some very good games on it. Um, and as I say, it's quite innovative in terms of what you can do with it. I mean, the, the it really it really is a super console, and I think with the Switch, it's it's something that can only get better and better. Um, you know, there's there's still time for more games to come out. You know, before before a new Nintendo console comes out. I mean, what I'm kind of thinking is that if they bring out a new Nintendo console. What are they gonna do with it? What will they do with to to make something better than what the Switch already is? <sighs> wow, I don't know, but I, I I'd be excited to know what they could potentially do with something like that. Um, but yeah, there you have it, folks. Um, so as I say, feel free to put your comments below. Um. Do any of you know why, why don't you put your own orders in um let's let's see where you would rank them all from first to seventh um you know to conclude i think we've been treated to some amazing games um as i say you know we've, we've had we've had beat em ups we've had fighting games we've had platformers we've had shoot em ups um you know, sport games. I mean, the the, the list goes on. You know, there's, there's so so many good games um, that have come out on these seven consoles, and you know, there's, there's all there's all this stuff that goes around about Xbox and PlayStation, and you know, before that, you know, Sega, um, but. Uh, yeah, for, for me, Nintendo's where it's at. You know, there, there is a place for all of those, so there's cost to it. You know, the, the, some of the te technological advancement that there is in, you know, in, in Xbox and PlayStation and whatnot is, is, you know, it's top level, there's no doubt. Um, and then, you know, in terms of, uh, in terms of Sega, you know, it had its time. Sega was uh, an important part of, of, of gaming. As I say, it was, wasn't necessarily my cup of tea, but um, when it comes to Sega, um, if Sega hadn't existed, then Nintendo would have had no competition. And so therefore, Nintendo might not have been as good as it ended up being. Um, so, there's a, you know there is that to contend with. I mean, when you when you look at Sega, you know the Master System probably lacked a little bit. Um, the Mega Drive or Genesis outside of Britain and Ireland, um, you know that's probably Sega's iconic console out of all of them. You know you, you also had the Saturn and the Dreamcast. Both of those certainly over here flopped a little bit. Um, in terms of sales, um, they they didn't really kind of break any kind of mold or, or revolutionise you know what game consoles were all about at the time. Again, all my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's other people out there. Maybe some of you have played a lot more Sega than I have. I never owned any Sega console. I only owned Nintendo. So, you know, again, feel free to put any comments down below that, uh, you know, that would ultimately educate me a little bit more on, on the history of Sega. Um, as I say, without, you know, without Sonic, would Mario have been as, as strong as he is today? Um, without Robotnik, would Bowser have been so, so strong now? You know, the, for every Sega character and every Sega game, you then had something from Nintendo. You know, Streets of Rage on Sega, Final Fight, Nintendo. You know, again, these are just examples. Um, and then you had some games that were ported onto both. Mortal Kombat featured on both um, Nintendo and on Sega. 
And then obviously, you know, in, in more recent times, you know, with, with, with Xboxes and Playstations, you know, they, they, they've, they've really taken the technology side of it all to the next level in terms of what you can do and what, what you can play. My only argument to it all in a sense is that for all of the amazing technological advancements that those particular two, you know, those two particular um, you know, consoles have, is that they come with their faults. Um, and, and there's no perfect console. You know, as amazing as these seven consoles are here right now, um, you know, they've all they've all got something that maybe isn't quite, you know, what it could be. But ultimately, you know, gaming is as strong now as it's ever been. But bearing in mind that when the original Nintendo Entertainment System came out, that was modern technology back then. You know, that. That is what, you know, really excited people, you know, when they were getting into gaming. And so there was, there was always that anticipation that, you know, as each new console came out, you know, SNES, uh, N64, you know, GameCube, etc. For each one, there was always that anticipation. How much better is it going to be? What new type of games are we going to get? What, what um, updated versions of games that we're going to get, things like that, um, and, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of having spent a lot of time on these types of consoles, a lot of my time, I really am, I'm, I'm very guilty of that, um, and, I, and I stream a lot of games off, off these types of consoles on, on my PC today, um, you know, so, uh, lots of fun lots of fun so um hope you've enjoyed the video um do please put your comments below uh let me know which you know which order or what order would you put these seven consoles in from best to uh to not so best um and uh yeah at the end of it all you know uh, any comments that are put down below i'll, I'll try and I'll try and respond to them if I can. Um, and as I say, if your favourite console has been put a little bit low, um, or if you feel that some that are not your favourite have been put a bit too high, don't take offence to it. As I say, it's all it's all just opinion based, uh, based on the experiences that I've had as a kid uh, and an adult for that matter, um, and where I would probably put them. As I say, some very close battles between some of these, between SNES and N64 was very tough to decide on first and second. Um, and then pretty much all those middle ones, I mean, were, were very, very close really. And then, it, you know, to, it was a bold move to put the original Nintendo at the bottom. But as I say, I, th I just think Age has caught up with it. But you could still pull out an original Nintendo Entertainment System today and have a lot of fun on it. Of course you can. I'd happily play Kirby from start to finish and enjoy it. Um, so, you know, it's certainly, um, it's certainly not a disrespect or a disservice to what the, you know, any of those consoles in the bottom half of the list have, have provided us over the years. Um, so yeah, as I say, do please leave your comments below. Um, please be nice. <laughs> don't, don't be too critical on it. As I say, just a bit of fun. And if you've got different opinions, that's great. Pop them in the comments. I'll I'll be I'll be happy to respond. Um, do please um, hit the thumbs up like button uh, if you've enjoyed the video. Um, even if you haven't, it'd be good if you could <laughs> pop a like on, or at the very least. You know, avoid the dislike. As I say, there's nothing offensive about this video. Um, and, you know, do please subscribe to the channel. Um, there's going to be live streams on my West Yorkshire Retro Gamer um, page and also um, recorded videos like this as well. Different tier lists, different opinion type videos and things like that. Um, so, really appreciate the support. Um, as I say, let me know your thoughts and I'll talk to you in the next one.
Bye-bye.